I'm Megan Matson. I'm with Main Street Moms. Um, my topic is Marin Energy, and I am just one of a large group of uh, organizations, both national and very local, um, along with local businesses um, who are supporting Marin Energy here in Marin County. Very basically, uh, Marin Energy is a community choice aggregation uh, program where the uh, municipalities, the cities and towns, and the County of Marin uh, can join together and make the energy purchasing decisions for our residents. Everything else will still reside with our incumbent utility, PG&E, so they'll handle the distribution, the billing, the bill will look the same, but we're going to make the decisions about where the power we uh, use comes from. If you're unfamiliar with the basics of Marin Clean Energy, uh, check out a very clear description at marincleanenergy.info. Right now, Marin Energy is at a real uh, important juncture going forward into a contract phase, and there have been many questions raised about risks and liability and um, the benefits of Marin Energy, and I just want to hit some of those high points quickly. Um, First of all, I just wanted to read a quick quote from uh, Bill McKibben, the founder of 350.org and a supporter of Marin Energy. Bill McKibben says, with the local leadership of the city and town councils and the county of Marin, pragmatic solutions like Marin Energy can and must become the norm to get us to 350 uh, carbon parts per million. Marin Energy will be a model demonstrating that our collective expenditures on energy can fund the urgently necessary switch to renewables and efficiency. I applaud your progress. So this uh, is looking at why do Marin Energy, very basically. Um, the Marin Energy Authority did a great response to the not so grand jury report that just came out. Look for that online, it's excellent. Quote, the quantity of GHG emissions reduction projected by Marin Energy is over 50 times greater than by using all other efficiency and renewables programs combined. So there's one big reason. Another quote, only the MCE program offers non-general fund revenue to support efficiency and renewable energy programs. That's a really important point. It's the only thing on the table that's got its own revenue stream, so we could actually do it. There are so many good ideas out there, but do we have the money to float it? And this would be our, the money we all pay every month for our electricity would now be going to support our own efficiency and renewable energy programs. What about risk? What about cost? We hear this in every meeting from the lovely paid staff of the incumbent utility. Um, which clearly sees this as a real threat to their business or they wouldn't be plowing the money and time that they are into defeating it. These quotes are taken from the San Rafael City Manager's most excellent report to the uh, City Council before they voted uh, this past week. Um, he worked of course closely with the City Attorney in examining all of the um, allegations of risk and liability that have been raised again and again by the program's opponents. Quote, regarding the MCE program, there is no financial risk to the city, in this case the city of Santa Fe, but it's uh, true across the board, to stay this course, uh, uh, to stay with Marine Clean Energy going forward. Another quote, no MCE program costs will be borne by the city's general funds. So that is a common accusation that it's going to be uh, coming out of the general funds. It is not. It is protected by the JPA. Finally, the city shall not be liable for the obligations of the JPA. This is the Joint Powers Authority. Um, joint Powers Authorities are, of course, used for all uh, sorts of things, and they create a firewall to protect the participating towns, cities, and county from the um, liabilities and financial obligations um, of the enterprise. Again, that's the San Rafael City Manager's Report. That's available online as well. And it's a um, good read if you're crazy. No. <laughs> now, one uh, topic dear and curious to my heart is why is PG&E spending so much to stop this? Now, looking back, uh, they are currently spending actually $3 million to get the ballot initiative that's considered a CCA killer on the June ballot um, in 2010. 
So this is just the beginning of that spending. That would close the door on uh, future efforts like this. Uh, they spent $10 million against San Francisco's Prop H clean energy uh, program in 2008 and successfully defeated it. They spent $16 million in PR against San Francisco's uh, CCA, uh, Marin Clean Energy is our Marin County CCA, uh, between 2005 and 2007. Uh, they spent $11.5 million uh, in a phony grassroots ballot initiative against the public power effort in Yolo County. They spent $2.7 million in San Francisco killing Measure D for public power in 2002. And this, all of these numbers are only um, the publicly available numbers when they've been fighting something that's on a ballot. None of their spending to date in Marin, because nothing's been on a ballot yet, um, is publicly available. The nice thing about Marin Energy is everything's transparent. You can look at all of it online. pg and is a closed house. So, the big question, what can you do? You can help fight the opt-out battle, uh, which is starting up March through July. Um, you can help fight the statewide ballot battle from now to June when that vote happens. Um, for information on what we mean by this, <laughs> you can sign up at info at themob.org. And also, if you um, have an organization or a business that would like to join this big list of support, uh, you can send the name of your organization or business to info at themob.org. So, thanks. <laughs>